Morning chaps, welcome to another Shave of the Day video. Uh, today I'm going to take you back to the beginning of my days of using Phoenix and Bow. And by that I mean I'm going to be using Phoenix and Bow unscented. Now I say back to the beginning um, because I was fortunate enough to be one of the initial testers of Kerry's Tallow Soaps. And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it back then. Um, during the first phases of the testing uh, Kerry was adamant that he wanted to send out an untested soap um, so that people weren't swayed by the scent and uh, so I was like, oh I love the scent and just get overtaken by that so it was left unscented to see the true performance of the soap and as you will know if you read my initial review which I'll post a link to in the comments below um, I was blown away by the quality of the soap and the production version is no different in that sense um, so what we have is a very simple shaving soap here it makes no bones about what it is unscented and it tells you all the good things in there the tallow the tussa silk and the lanolin and uh, they are three fantastic ingredients that make this soap what it is um, now it says unscented but as you will know everything has a scent and this is, to me, a bit like plasticine. And I like that because it kind of reverts me back to my childhood and the days of making plasticine burgers, plasticine Loch Ness monsters in various colours. So it's a nice, familiar, kind of reminiscing type scent um, from younger days. As for the performance, well, again, if you've read my review, which again is down there in the comments and um, you'll know I loved it um, in every possible way um, so I'm going to dedicate today's shave back to then which means apart from using the unscented soap I will be using a brush I've not used in a while um, because I've acquired fantastic brushes since um, but this is one of the brushes I use constantly through the testing and it's this the Body Shop Synthetic Brush it's a basic brush it's seven pounds, it's a synthetic knot. Um, it's not a particularly fantastic synthetic knot, but it does a job. It's quite springy, um, so if you want to face lather with it, you can end up with a mess, um, because the lather just flies off in all directions. Um, but for a bowl lather and a paint job, it's great. And we will be, on the strength of that, bowl lathering in the shaving room bowl, and we'll be using Razor Up Bazooka with an Astra Superior Platinum Blade that's got 18 days worth of shaves on it, uh, 54 passes, so this will be 19, uh, which will take us up to 57 passes, and you'll understand why in a bit. <coughs> so, I haven't done my pre-shave process of hot towel. So I'm going to skip that because it takes a while. Uh, bear with me one second. There it is, right there. I'll get some rock face scrub on the go, which is what I've done before when testing carry soap. So I'm going to apply a little to my hand. Not a lot, about the size of a Marifat pea. Just a little water. And just have at it. Now I know this isn't the best replacement for a hot towel for me, but it does a good job. The glycerin in the scrub helps moisturise, forcing the beard to be softened. It's always good to get a good scrubbing occasionally as well, just gets rid of the old dead skin. Not that a razor wouldn't do that anyway. So, short scrub. And the old trusty blue towel to wipe off with. Get rid of the old uh, beads and residue. And for a quick prep, we're done. So, lathering. With a synthetic brush, it doesn't hold an awful lot of water, so I'll just dip it in, a couple of shakes out, looks a bit like so, and we're going to go into the pot, 
and in fairness, it starts to chew up the soap quite nicely. Which, for Kerry soaps, isn't hard to do because they just give themselves up quite nicely to the brush and perform or produce a great pre lather straight almost straight away. In fact, they are from that short load. I've got stacks. That brush is literally full of pre lather, full to the brim. Everything is done. So, pop that in the bowl. But we're not going to waste what's left here. No, yeah. just going to apply it to the old face. Look a bit silly while I'm whipping a lather, but the goodness of the all the qualities will start to become apparent. Some people do this with blue water. There's no shame in doing that. Works quite well. There. Yeah. I'll use that. Yeah. Hopefully we had a good Saturday yesterday everyone. I had a productive Saturday. Got some weeding done. Got a little bit of shopping done. Hit my 11,000 step count. And uh, yeah, so in the bowl, I'm just going to whip away. Now, <clears throat> talk a little bit about the brush while we whip a ladder. It's a seven pound brush uh, available in your local body shop online, probably. You may find one in a piff. A pay it forward if you're not familiar with that term. And you can see straight away we've built a thick, very thick. I mean that is clotted cream and then some thick. So we're going to add some water to this leather. A good generous drop there. Probably about half a teaspoon at this point. And we're just going to whip it. Whip it, whip it, whip it. And what I found during the initial testing was consistency. And that's what I liked about these soaps, so they're consistent in their performance. Um, I think I got about 12 or 13 shaves out of the sample that Kerry sent for the initial testing. And uh, my initial thoughts were, don't change a thing. Because it's just perfect as it is. And uh, as far as I can tell, in terms of performance, it hasn't changed one iota. Um, in terms of the scent, it's exactly the same. Here we go. I'm getting a, a rich, yogurty. Well, it's a very thick yogurt. Admittedly, it's not coming off the brush. Look at that peak. A rich, double cream, yogurty lather. Now, this is what impressed me about the initial testing. was the quality of the lather. And this is no different. It's just thick and gloopy. And dense, no air bubbles, no nothing unpleasant at all. Add some more water. But yeah, back in the uh, initial testing, it's about twelve, about twelve shades ish, and uh, every single one just got better and better as I learned the ladder and uh, built it to two straight razors to suit double edge. And uh, I've since used it with single edge mongoose. I've even used it with an R41. And it's just a wonderful protective lather. Let's see, we're going stupidly thick. And bear in mind that was a short load and a very thick, very thick lather, which suggests this isn't a bad brush for lathering at all. And uh, yeah, so we just whipped away <coughs> for those 12 shaves. And, I noted the performance, paying particular attention to my key areas of glide, uh, which this has absolutely stacks of <coughs> cushion. Again, well, you've seen the lather, you've seen how thick and rich it is, so there's no doubt in the cushion there. And the tallow definitely helps in the post shave as well. Um, the tusser silk, as I understand it, comes from somewhere but certainly adds its own joie de vivre to the ladder and to the post shave because 
as I've said to Kerry, the post shave from his soaps is the best bar none. Look, wonderful lather from a cheap £7 brush. And a bit more water because I wanted to. But yeah, so I was literally blown away in those initial testing runs. And uh, I know I wasn't alone, there were some people who thought it was good. But I thought it was mind blowing, and it's because of that testing that I bought everything Phoenix and Bow offer. And as Kerry said, basically his base soap will stay the same, and just scent it accordingly. And when you've got a base soap that works, silly question there, gents, why would you change? Why would you want something else? You can, the short answer is you don't. You don't want anything else. And whilst it may not excite the nose in as much as, say, Spitfire does, or Obsidian. I will do a Shave the Day video with Obsidian for future reference. That's a wonderful, wonderful scent. Um, this is a dependable, reliable soap that you can pull out when you've got a sensitive day on your face. So if you just want something that's not going to clash with any EDTs or colognes or whatever, or if you just want a blank canvas, for whatever reason, this soap is perfect for that. Look at this. This lather is so voluminous and rich and dense. I mean, if I can get you up close. So dense. There's a couple of bubbles there from my whipping, but the actual lather itself is stupidly thick, stupidly dense, and just perfect. So it's about as, let's just check the gloss on that, it's about as ready as I like it. So I'm just going to have a quick rinse, and we'll be ready to shave. Now, it's a quite nice day out there. A bit of cloud. Hopefully, no rain for anyone today. Me, I'm going shopping in a bit, get some food, maybe get a new pair of trainers because um, I need to do my, my running again. Um, I enjoy a bit of running. And uh, last November, for November, if anyone followed my videos back then um, on a different channel, mine, my own personal one. I was running 10k a day, every day for November, to raise money for the November charity. And uh, I grew a particularly wonderful Ned Flanders style moustache, and I will be doing the same again this year, although Tash design has yet to be decided. But I did the 10k a day, every day, and thoroughly enjoyed it, and uh, I smashed my own times, almost daily, um, as I improved in fitness, and I even close to, then I beat the 10k time for Mo Farah for the Olympic 2012. So, yeah, not bad going for someone who's basically a couch potato most of the time. Anyway, I digress. We have perfect lather <coughs> ready to go. So we're going to shave, again like I say, with a razor or a bazooka, with an 18 day old Astra Superior Platinum blade and we will see just how good this is because it's going to protect wonderfully. Okay, trap blade. Now this brush is definitely more of a painting brush. Like I said it's very springy, verging on too much backbone. So I tend to paint with it. If it's seven pound, it works quite well. It's an ideal travel brush. I do take it when I travel. Because if I lose it, seven quid, I can get another one. I ain't gonna lose any sleep over it. And as you can see, it's lathered my face in the same way an expensive badger would. It's not as nice to use, but 
does the trick. Just get rid of the old uh, lip area, and away we go. So, razor up bazooka, unscented phoenix and bone, here we go. So, there we go, stacks of glide, as is to be expected. And the quality of the lather is such that this blade doesn't feel 19 days old. It feels as fresh as a daisy. Now the plasticine aroma I mentioned earlier isn't overly present in the shave, which for those who don't like a plasticine type smell is probably a good thing, um, but it goes and defends the unscented name. So nothing to clash with anything else you want to use later in the day. Perfect base in the uh, in that sense. If you've got a very light or gentle fragrance that would otherwise be altered by a scented soap, that might just leave a little bit of aroma behind. First pass, no drama, just a perfect first pass. <coughs> so just wipe off and see where we're at. Yeah, normal, perfect Phoenix and Bow experience there. So, stacks of residual glide. It's uh, okay, we're not baby smooth yet because we've only done one pass. But the, the glide is there, it's perfect, just what you want. So we'll lather up for the uh, second pass, and I'll say it was a nice day, it's starting to get a bit grey out there, um, which could could scatter my plans for later, we shall see. But anyway, it's not going to scatter my shave, because I always enjoy it. A bit more lather, I've taken most of it out of the brush, and uh, did it just sit in there in the bowl. Wonderful stuff. Now, I think the, the unscented soap is going to be great also for people who have sensitive skin, who might be sensitive to oils, be they fragrance oils or essential oils, because there's none of that in here. It's just good soap, very good, incredible soap. And I think the unscented doesn't get the coverage or the mention that it should because everyone likes a nice exciting scent whereas unscented could be seen as boring I don't think of it as boring I think of it as solid I think of it as dependable and I think of it like I say as that blank, blank canvas for the rest of your day if you're not sure what scent you want and you soak that day and I have those days where I just don't know what I want, I'll reach for it, because uh, there's none of that to worry about. Just layer on your scent later. There we go. Under the neck, or under the jawline, should I say. Now, as we can see, nada, no clogging. It's a wonderful soap.
sometimes I hate having a cleft chin, makes it awkward. There we go. The second part, complete with no fuss, no drama. And just a great second pass. It's amazing the ladder gets right up the side of the nose. I know when I've uh, been cleaning up afterwards, I've had it in my hair, particularly when using that uh, body shop brush and it just springs around. <coughs> They've had it everywhere. And some on the bathroom walls. Springy brushes are great for that. Anyway, the third and final pass is quite a sad pass, really, because it means the end of the shave. I get quite sad at the end of the shave sometimes because I enjoy it. So there you can see again a dependable painting on of the lather from the body shop brush. And for seven quid, can you really argue? No. Ideal for vegans who don't like animal hair. Kind of ironic that I'm using a tallow soap. Um, and kind of ideal for travel. Yeah, not a bad little brush for seven quid. Grand does a lot better, but you pay a bit more for it. Here we go. Third lathering. Done. Let's try the old hands off there, as we can see. No plugging. Just a wonderful empty razor ready to go. Now this pass, the third against the grain pass, is where I first noted the fantastic qualities of Kerry soaps. The level of glide and protection on offer is just unsurpassed in my eyes. And I think it would take a soapy miracle to do so. Um, they just allow for effortless shaving over these difficult spots of mine. I mean I still get the occasional problem where I'm just not paying full attention. But the quality of the lather is such that it, it's very forgiving and helps protect against quite a few of the problems. So I mean it's no it's no no replacement for care and attention, but where sometimes you might otherwise come a cropper, this quality lather just has an extra layer of protection. Allowing the blade to glide whereas otherwise it might have caught, for example. But, I've caught me Adam's apple. Shaver's curse on video. There we go. Three passes done. A wonderful, wonderful shave. despite me catching the old uh, apple there. It happens. It's a sharp blade on a sensitive bit of skin poking out. It's going to happen. So, a bit of lather up there behind the ear today. Yeah, it gets everywhere. Just like those bad pennies. Just go use where it wants. Right. 
So, what do we have? We've had the Razor Rock Bazooka with a now 19 day old blade in it. And we've had unscented shaving soap from Phoenix and Bow. We've got sunshine again. We've had the trusty shaving room bowl and we've had the body shop brush. So, what we are going to do is something that I haven't done in a while. Let's get the old Osmo block out. Just to give that a bit of a, a do that. Now, some people that would sting. There's a little bit of something there. Not a huge sting, testament to the quality of the lather. Just not irritating the skin around there. So, yeah, leave that to do its thing. So, what do we think of the unscented soap? It's not changed. It's fantastic. Glide is perfect. Cushion is perfect. And like I say, if it can protect against one of these with a feather, and an R41 with a feather. Poche feel is where Phoenix and Bow soaps really, really knock it out of the park. Um, they're perfect from day one. Um, slick post shave feel. I say slick, I mean, in as much as your skin just, just, you can rub your hand over your skin and just glides over nicely. And no dryness, no tightness. No unpleasantries of any kind. Happy days. See, look, stopped. A little bit red, but what do you expect? Anyway, Phoenix and Bow Unscented Soap is one that you really ought to have in your collection. Even if you don't like unscented soaps, if you just want a quality soap that's going to allow you to, I don't know, expand on your fragrance palette during the day without fear of interruption, give it a try. If you've got sensitive skin and you find oils irritate, some people I know are sensitive to say sandalwood oil, cinnamon or cedarwood, that kind of thing it irritates your skin, give it a try. So, have I said give it a try? So just in case, give it a try. It's wonderful stuff and that uh, is a bargain. It's a big, big four ounce tub and uh, I think I paid about 8 95 something like that for it. It's going to last an absolute age. So, gents, thank you very much for watching my videos. If you like them, give them a thumbs up. If you like the channel as a whole, I'd really appreciate your subscription. And uh, let your friends know about what we do. If, uh, if you see anything you want to see, or if you don't, sorry, if you haven't seen anything that you want to see, let me know, drop me a comment, drop me a message, something of that nature. And I will do my very best to do it for you. If it's information about a product I've used, such as this, just write the question down below and uh, I'll, I'll answer to the best of my ability. Which, depending on what time of day you catch me, could be under the influence of coffee, under the influence of sleep deprivation, or just with an annoying six-year-old son around trying to pride and poke and say, Dad, can you play balloons, battle defence, whatever it's called on his tablet. So, I'm waffling about things that are non-soap related. So, gentlemen, this has been Phoenix and Bo Unscented Shaving Soap. I have been me. I'll catch you again soon. Bye.